To continue on our conversation about color matching different displays and the best color gamut to calibrate your display to, what I'd like to do is discuss and talk about our smart devices. These are generally our smartphone or tablet, the device that we have with us a lot of times. And what I like to do is explore this and see if we can calibrate these devices. What happens if the colors that we're seeing on these devices are different than what we're seeing on our Pro Calibre display? How to handle that situation? And are these smart devices that we have great devices to do any color proofing or any serious color work on? Let's find out together. I'm Art and Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Now that many of us are calibrating our displays and are using higher end displays to do our work on, whether this is a software or hardware calibrated display, we are now looking at colors that are really accurate. And that's a great thing. However, what comes with that is a question of what I'm seeing on my screen does not really match with what I'm seeing on my phone once I upload them. And the conversation on this spectrum can be my phone is much more saturated or my phone is much more vivid. Two, my phone is, you know, dull. It doesn't look quite as good as green. So I get a conversation on the entire spectrum of things. The follow up of this conversation generally comes down to this. Can I calibrate these smartphones or tablet displays so that they match with what I'm seeing on my, you know, full calibrated setup? The answer to that question at this point of time is no, it cannot really be done. At one point in time, you could do that using an x right app called Color True. There were some limitation about Color True in general is that you can't just use the app itself. You have to also own an x right color calibration device and you have to use a companion software on either a Mac or a PC in order to calibrate your tablet device. Furthermore, with Color True, the only app that you're able to see true accurate colors is in the Color True app. You can't really see it throughout the entire operating system, which kind of negates the point of really going in and calibrating the phone screen because what you really want to do then is be able to use that color profile throughout the entire operating system, but you can't really do that. In order for you to do that, you have to use either a full-fledged Mac OS or Windows 10 for you to be able to go in and change those things. This is done on these operating system in order to increase security and a feature what we call sandboxing. So essentially on these operating system, they prevent explicitly the app from making changes to the system wide operating system on the phone. This could be iOS, Android, iPad OS, or even just Chrome OS in general. The only settings that the app can change is within the app itself. So with Color True, for you to be able to see good, true, accurate colors, you have to be in that app. And if you want to see any pictures with those accurate colors, you have to load those pictures into the app before, making the experience of using an app somewhat cumbersome. At this point in time, x right have already discontinued the development of the Color True app, and you can't really download them from the App Store anymore. So there you have it, some history and some reason why when you try to go in and calibrate this device, it doesn't really work. Now, before we go in and talk about why your smart device screen may not necessarily match a color on a fully calibrated display, what I like to do first is talk about the categories of creative and let's find out which one we belong to. The answer will probably be surprising that we probably belong to multiple different groups depending on the task that we do. The first group is the one that uses the smart device to do everything from capture, edit to upload. Don't get me wrong, the cameras on our smartphones are getting much better with every single release and I know that there are many users out there who use this device as a single content creation device and you can definitely do that. There's a second group of users which I would call the hybrid users, meaning that you photograph with a bigger camera, a DSLR or a mirrorless and what you do then is you upload those pictures to a tablet device such as an iPad for instance and run Lightroom you know, on the iPad and do the editing there. You can certainly do it that way and you can also use a RAW or JPEG workflow in that regard. And there are more of the, I would say, the true pro workflow where what you're doing is that you're dealing with a large quantity of images such as what I have to deal with when I photograph a, uh, a wedding, an event, for that matter. I mean, there's a lot of pictures that I have to work on. So in generally what I would do is capture on a mirrorless or DSLR and then what I would do is bring those images into a computer to manage it here and also use a program that has much more power, for example, Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One, to edit those pictures and then export them to the web. Now that I have defined the categories of creative, I'm sure that we fall into more than one category depending on what we're doing. Primarily, the focus of this discussion will be on categories three. 
Those are the ones that create on the bigger cameras, bring them into your computer, edit on these large programs, and generally they're going to be edited on a calibrated display environment. This could be internal laptop display that's been calibrated or external hardware or software calibrated display that has been calibrated. So now that we have defined that, let's talk about the groups of smart devices. I would separate them into two, the Apple device and all of the other. So the Apple device are generally going to run iOS or iPadOS and that makes it simple. And the reason why I group them this way is because Apple device has been really consistent in terms of the way how they calibrate their display from the factory to DCI-P3. The only discrepancies that you may see is when you move from a small screen such as on an iPhone to a larger tablet to a, for example, iMac display, you may see some differences because the LCD underlying technology is different or between different phones, for example, an OLED versus an LCD phone. But that's no longer going to be a problem on the phone because Apple have just recently moved their entire lineup to an OLED display. All right, that being said, they've done a really great job with calibrating their display to DCI-P3, but there's a few things to note about the Apple devices, and that is a feature called True Tone that is enabled by default now when you set up all of these iOS devices. It just enables it for you and you have to go in and turn it off. What is True Tone? Well, True Tone constantly measures the lighting temperature within the environment that you're in and it will adjust your display white so that it matches closely with that environment. The problem with that is your screen is always constantly changing and when that's happening, your pictures and the way how you're perceiving them when you're viewing it on those devices are constantly changing. That's number one problem. The other thing too is that if you take any phones or a group of phones from your friends or your family members, line them all up on the table, load the same picture, they're all going to look different, even though they're all Apple products. That is because the users go in and set the phone brightness display differently. Some of them may have screen protectors on there that changes the way how the colors are being transmitted from the glass. I mean, most of the time it will transmit 100%, but there are some privacy type screen protectors that will also change depending on the angle that you're viewing it at to protect the privacy, but that can also change the way how the color is being perceived on the display too. Now let's move on to the other group of devices. These are Android, and let's talk about the more popular devices out there, which is the one made by Samsung. They make really great devices. Samsung uses a AMOLED display, which is an OLED display that integrate the touch inside it, but Samsung has a tendency to tune their display to super vivid saturation. And it, within the operating system of Samsung phone, you can go in and choose the mode between, I would say natural and vivid. There's a way to do that. And also other picture control modes that you may be able to do on the other Android phone as well. And that makes it difficult because there are so many fork of Androids out there between all the device manufacturers and that gets really hard to determine of what setting you turn off and where because all of these devices have a tendency to change where they put some menu items or some setting items. The other thing too is that all these devices out there uses different type of displays throughout the entire range. It can be really quite confusing. So obviously, just based on this discussion alone, we know that our mobile or our smart devices are generally not one to really be trusted. On the Apple side, you have True Tone, great calibration, but it has True Tone and the user also have brightness control. On the Android side, you have a tendency to go over saturated colors because, well, obviously the phone has been set up that way. And the other thing too, we kind of really think about these smart devices as more of a content consumption device. Majority of users out there, some of them are creating, yes, but they're not necessarily pro creators. What they're really doing is that they're using these devices to view pictures on Instagram, on Facebook. They're using this as an entertainment content consumption device. And that's perfectly fine. However, if you're trying to do professional work or if you're trying to prove your work on these content consumption devices, that becomes a problem really quickly because, because again, the screens are not necessarily calibrated correctly or set correctly to a you know fixed standard. And this also leads us to the next point that all these screens on our smart devices are generally tuned up a little bit more saturated in order for us to really be wowed by the pictures that we're seeing. Another thing too is that if you look at all of our screens on these devices, they're generally all glossy, right? They have a piece of glass in front of them. That's really great. It will transmit really vivid colors. However, if you work on any pro external display, whether that's software or hardware calibrated, you will mostly see that there is a matte coating on the display of some sort to minimize any reflection from the environment and minimize any distraction so that you can be immersed in the photos or in the edit that you're doing. The other thing about these matte displays in general is that they're not going to be able to show the colors quite as vivid as they would be on these glossy displays. 
And that has to do with just the way how the display is manufactured in general. There's nothing wrong with these panels. And personally for me, I prefer to edit on these matte displays than on a glossy one. That being said though, there's also another thing that we have to remember is that if we have a software calibrated display, most of the time we would be able to calibrate our display to display P3 or DCI P3, which is not a problem. And that will match closely with majority of the smart devices that are out there that has been pre-calibrated from the factory. For example, like I said, Apple calibrate their device to DCI-P3. The thing is that if you have a software calibrated display that's capable of showing 99% Adobe RGB, you can set that display to Adobe RGB and calibrate it so that you would get an Adobe RGB color ICC profile. This is the same thing on a hardware calibrated display where you can go in and change the gamut output of those display. So when it comes to these display, if you have one that are capable of showing 99% Adobe RGB or even more, what you're really doing is that you're editing your photos for the Adobe RGB color space. And when you're moving the photos to these devices, they're being viewed on display P3 color space. Granted, yes, you can export your photo as sRGB from here and you will be viewing somewhat of an sRGB file on these devices. The color will still be different. The main key thing to take away from this is not to really worry about the way how these devices are showing the colors as I already explained. These are not proofing devices. Think of them more of a content consumption device that can also do creative work on. However, what you want to do is set the bearing standard so that when you're editing on your display, you're looking at a really good color. And one of the best standards to use when you're trying to edit any photos, whether you print or not, or you just do the work for web, is to do it to print. And this is the reason why I emphasize calibrating your display between 80 to 120 candela. This way it matches closely with the standard print that will come out from the printer because once the print have come out, there's really no way to change the density on the prints itself. So if the print's too dark, you can put more light on it, but the darkness of that print is still the same. You may shine more light on it, but it's only able to reflect so much. And that is really a great standard for all of us to go by because as I explained earlier, all of these devices that we have, the color can really shift all over the place. If we try to adjust the color to one phone, there's no saying that it won't look terrible on the next phone or the following phones. So for those of you that are professional creative like myself, for instance, if you have, for example, client A, B, and C, and your client A calls up saying the color doesn't look good on their phone, what you can simply do is tell them to turn off True Tone. If they're on a Samsung device, tell them to set the phone to natural color setting and that will help out a lot with the oversaturation or whatever they may seeing. But most of the times your clients are not creative professional like ourselves and they're generally not gonna be as critical about it. But the thing that you should never do is go in and color correct those pictures so that it looks good on their phone because what looks good on client's A phone would not look good on client B phone and it may or may not look good on client C phone. The problem is that if you start to do that, you're starting to color correct for a moving target. And that is one of the worst thing that you can do. Having color correct to a printed image, whether you print or not, that is going to be the best thing that you can do for your color management workflow. So anyway, I hope that you find this discussion about color calibrating your smart devices and just color matching your smart devices in general helpful. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified every time I upload cool new contents like this. And until next time, art is right. <laughs>